Well, about a half hour later, we're beginning uh, the weekend vlog for uh, the 29th and 30th of August. So that's gonna it'll be it'll be one vlog for the two one vlog for the two days. And so, but I thought I, I was gonna wait until after I got up and I'm going back to bed again. I'm still wiped out. Uh, still heavily fatigued. I do have a lot on the list for today. I got, I, I, I was surprised I was able to get as much done yesterday as I did. Um, including fix, fixing up a new drink method. Uh, some of the drinks I make, uh, because their teas require a sort of a sitting time, so you have to prepare the drink ahead of time. It has to sit for a bit and before you drink it. So, Rather than doing the drinks one at a time, I thought I'd do a batch of drinks, and so that requires a bit more of an effort. A bit more of an effort. Uh, so I've got a system now in place that will do that. It will produce the drinks. It will allow it to sit and seep, uh, sort of steep, and, and, and sort of get happy, happy. You know, so the flavors will be at its peak. And then all you have to do is is you pour it over a glass of ice. It, the, the ice shocks the, uh, uh, the 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 tea into a particular cool flavor. And actually, believe it or not, pouring over ice and shocking your drink from room temperature down to a colder temperature does change the profile of the drink. It does actually make an improvement in, in, in terms of the overall flavor. So. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that set up sometime this weekend. Uh, it was set up. I got it working. It's just now a matter of, of using it, and then I'm gonna add some other uh, other uh, items to uh, my uh, my uh, drink array, if you will. Uh, and that way, it will give me a, a, instead of having one one type of drink, I'll have three or four different types of tea. They're basically all teas, uh, but you can flavor your tea, your teas with different fruit. And so you'll have fruit plus whatever tea it is, uh, and that will give you your your your, uh, your basic flavors. So that's what I've set up over, the, over these last few days, and it's not working. Uh, now I'm also going to sit down and fix up my TV. Because uh, I usually use my browser to do that, uh, but the browser is changing, so uh, the decision is to move on to another browser. Uh, I'm going to be using primarily, uh, uh, for now, I'll be using Dolphin. I've used Dolphin before. It's a good browser, and so I'll be using that browser to uh, watch TV on, actually. And then that, my TV shows are uh, the YouTube stroll. That's my TV, and of course I was watching uh, the cartoon Fillmore. It's an old Disney program. Uh, it, it, again, it's, it's primarily aimed at uh, middle schoolers and uh, and the, the tween demographic. So it's something that I, I do enjoy. Uh, I know that the, the, the cartoons that, that are around now aren't as good as they were before. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe some of the writers... Uh, aren't as good there's not there is there aren't as many there aren't as many references to uh, the things in history I mean a lot of times if you if, particularly for kids shows uh, if you can't put something in there that's well most people try to they they, 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 they try to put in adult humor but it doesn't really work on a kids show so what they'll do is they'll add in humor from history they'll, they'll, they'll be Historical jokes, be, you know, things like that. Uh, even cultural jokes in terms of, uh, let's say, like things from Shakespeare and so on and so forth. Uh, and if you don't know Shakespeare, you don't know history, and a large chunk of the uh, generation now that are older, as adults, don't know this stuff, there is a complete disconnect. Then you're not going to be aware of the uh, higher level of jokes and the writers who are younger now uh, aren't going to have those references because they don't know the stuff. They don't know uh, where everything came from. So 
it is going to, it, it, it does produce a sort of a less, a less enjoyable type of script because there's nothing there in the script itself. The people in, in the script don't know enough. Oh, sure, sorry, the people who are writing the script don't know enough. Uh, vocabulary and proper grammar while you're in, in the fatigue state is very difficult. It makes it even worse when you're on camera because there are these flubs, there are these sort of natural gaps and goofs and whatever. But this is the way it is. I don't cut this out because this is the conversation. It's unedited, it's, un, it's unfiltered, and this is the way it is. Well, the camera functionality has certainly changed. Uh, there's been an upgrade to Android on uh, my phone, and uh, things are all new. <laughs> Not necessarily a good thing. Not all things that are new are good. Sometimes they create a lot of problems. And Well, anyways, uh, I am working on switching over my TV guide, my uh, the way I do my TV, uh, to a new format. Because uh, apparently... Uh, uh, Firefox went and changed how it does its ta tabs in terms of uh, bookmarks, and the bookmarks seem to be the most functional manner of uh, uh, setting up my YouTube's uh, uh, YouTube stroll. Uh, that's how I do it: is is through uh, bookmark tabs. I don't use the app. I don't use uh, um, anything else but uh, browsers in the tab. Uh, I put the the bookmarks into a tab, and, uh, and away I go. And that's how it functions. Uh, take that away, which is what Firefox had, and now you no longer have a functional TV. You have to sort of figure out, well, what's your next alternative move? And quite frankly, I don't know what it is. I'm trying different things. That's the way it is. When you don't know something, you have to try it out and see how it works. Anyways, it's about it's August 31st. Uh, we're ending the vlog for today. We're ending in, in my kitchen. And let's see, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Getting a little bit of a late start to the day. Uh, I was up earlier, but uh, different things uh, had to be done to check out. Uh, I had to check the mail. I had to uh, check my um, uh, one of my products on the research desk. Uh, Rhonda seems not be working anymore. Uh, I do have to go in and, and sort of uh, see what I'm going to do next. Uh, I did set my school school schedule, so people know that it's now uh, my school schedule is from September uh, to December. Take to take December and January off, and to do some uh, reorganizing of my notebooks and do some uh, restructuring. Uh, hopefully, also do some upgrades at the time at that time as well. I do upgrades during the uh, school year uh, as needed as new projects come in. But I typically wait until uh, you know December, January, where you have the time off. That's where I schedule most of the upgrades, most of the restructuring, most of the um, additions to uh, the study desk, the research desk that uh, that are needed and will help me push forward. So, uh, but the thing is, I didn't tell you. What the, what the what the schedule is in terms of what the subjects are well basically they are the subjects of math science history English language arts uh, along those lines they're along, along the lines of the standard school subjects however when you get into them there is something more significant there but I can't talk when, I can't tell you what it is because a large chunk of the work is classified <laughs> this is the nature once you get beyond a certain level, uh, of understanding and you get into this area of call it advanced knowledge a large chunk of the advanced knowledge is classified you can't talk about it and also it becomes too dangerous to talk about you, because you're looking into things that have been hidden for a reason and things sometimes and the thing is they've been hidden for a reason but what happens sometimes when you hide something you know you, you don't want your brother to, you've got a nice candy bar you want to hide because you don't want your bro the brother or your siblings that your brothers or sisters because you know they're going to take it if they find it they're going to take it so you hide it 
the problem is sometimes, do you remember where it was <laughs> that you hit it <laughs> when you want that candy bar? Oh, I want the candy bar now, and ooh, I can't remember where it is. <laughs> well, this is uh, so what happens is that people will hide things. They'll hide information, basically archives. And for someone like myself, that's what you're looking for. You're, looking, you're, you're sniffing, you're looking around for these hidden archives. Because they'll have information in there that typically wasn't available to the public. And that's what it is. These information, the hidden archives, which why they're forbidden, forbidden archives, they were just information that was not available to the public. And once you see what's in there, it shifts your understanding of how things work. Particularly how the world works. Why, why, why are all the, uh, all the decisions for, you know, for masks, for COVID, all different? Everyone's doing different things. No one seems to be on the same page. Why? Well, because there's a lot of hidden information there. A lot of times when you see something confusing in the public eye, there's something, there's something else going on behind the scene. People look at NASA. Oh, yeah, NASA's a space, space program. Well, not really. NASA is a cover for hidden research that's going on within physics. That's what it is. So all everything everything you're seeing there is a cover for that particular program, for the for that hidden the hidden knowledge. And so what happens, a large chunk of what I'm doing, including atmospheric physics, uh, is a cover for other things that are going on that I really can't talk about. This 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 is the hidden knowledge. And so the subjects that come up, and this is what you describe it as because it is open ended. Open ended. There is no real end to this. Textbooks will never give you the hidden information. Textbooks will give you an indi indication that there's something more beyond. But they will never give you the actual answer. You, this is sort of, you have to understand that the, for, 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 if a person like, like myself, or if you're into exploration, the textbooks are the beginning point. That's your jumping off point. That's where you start leaving the, uh, called the standard lines of understanding. Uh, once you leave the standard lines of understanding, that's when you start getting into more of the the, the meat of what actually of what actually is going on. And as you start doing that, you kind of you end up you end up being more isolated because once again you you really can't talk about the stuff because you'll begin to realize uh, that other people are going to start watching you. The, the, the nature of the official nature of, 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 of being official, of being authorized, is completely gone. It's, it's, it's a whole new world out there. Nothing is authorized, nothing is official. That's what they call black. And the thing is, is once you start getting involved in that area, there are certain realities in terms of safety and so on and so forth. Because there are other people who want the information, other people who don't want the information to get out, and they're concerned. They want you to do the work because they don't know themselves what, the, what, what this information is, the hidden information is. So as long as you're doing the work and, and you're producing good work and, hey, keep going because we want to see what's hidden out there. But as soon as you start leaking it out to the public and getting too much information out, it's not good for your health. <laughs> Let's put it that way, you know. And so... There's a balancing act, and this is what I've been learning over the last three, four years, is how to produce that balancing act between talking, and that's why you have to shift from a Big Bang Theory all to uh, uh, our life as Cyborg Alpha. It was this sort of shift going from, let's talk about the research and bring everything out, and do now sort of pushing it into the background, and you're seeing sort of a cover for everything. <laughs> it leads into it. Uh, there are still going to be avenues that well, we'll talk more deeply about things, but uh, not here. Here is the cover, here is the beginning, here is your entry point, and there's going to be more later on. Anyways, and that's it. If you like the journey, if you like the journey of life, this is the way you go. And it doesn't matter if you're worth it or not. This whole That whole concept of the, the Yowie vlogs or Yowie, uh, as, hit, that's good for him. You know, if that's your thing, you want to do that, fine. But the thing is, if you want to go out to the edge of life, you want to push the boundaries, you want to be an explorer, it doesn't matter whether you're worth it or not. Because you're going into the unknown. You're not going to know things. And so, being in that situation means that 
it doesn't matter whether you work or not. You have to push forward because there's nowhere there's nowhere to go but out, and the only way to get out is to, is is to uh, is to you know move forward. I talk about this important. So that does that, that moving forward as your only option doesn't give you the sense of oh, oh maybe I'm not worth it. I'm not going to continue on. No, you have to move forward because you, you know the only way out of the situation that you're in is to move forward. There is no other option. Until at that point in time, uh, the Yowie question, the uh, you are worth it question, just simply goes out the window. It's no longer relevant. But again, it depends on what you want to do with your life. If you want to live within the boundaries and borders of, uh, of standards aside, then fine. If you want to stay within what we we'll call a standard knowledge, that's fine. But as soon as you want to get to the edge, and some of the people on the edge who have never really left the edge are the conspiracy theorists, the conspiracy theorists tell you that there's something more out there, like the textbooks. But the thing is, is that they actually haven't gone beyond the edge and really sort of pushed the boundaries. If they did, they were they'd be in the black programs. So that's where you get, that's where you how you can sort of uh, you can sort of assess the so called these conspiracy theorists. They're on the edge. They're looking around. They know the edge is there, but they don't know how to leave the edge. Uh, an explorer like myself, I've been doing this for thirty years. I'm way off the edge now. I'm way out into what we'll call deep space. I had been lost in space for 13 years. I just got back about a year ago. I'm still unpacking and sort of figure out well, what the next step is. And this is one of them, one of the next steps. So, anyways, see you in a few hours or an hour or so for uh, the beginning of the, the next vlog for Monday. Uh, August 31st. <laughs> this is the ending.